Howdy folks. So today I want to talk about the Burson Playmate 2. This is a DAC headphone amplifier all in one. Um, that's this guy right here and uh, I'm not sure on video what this display is going to look like. Uh, maybe some flashing but in real life it doesn't flash so hey. Um, <clears throat> this thing is pretty awesome. It's a full class A headphone amp. Um, it's got single ended output. You got a, what is it? Uh, 6.5 millimeter, 6.35, uh, and then a <clears throat> 3.5 single ended outputs. Um, let's see if we, well, you know, nice volume knob. Um, we got some menu items. You can change inputs from USB to SPDIF. Um, and let's see here. If we look at this, here's our back of it. Uh, so these are outputs, uh, RCA outputs, SPDIF in and USB in, USB-C. Um, and uh, this power adapter, I actually, so this says 24 volts DC three amp. This device, um, I believe Burson is having some issues with their power supply supplier. Um, so the power supply that I got with this was not working right. And right now I'm using uh, this guy, which is a HP. See, the thing is though, this is a 18 and a half, uh, volt, um, output power adapter. So it's not exactly perfect. Um, but so far as I can tell, this thing works fine. Um, I haven't noticed any problems, so hopefully it's a uh, legit power supply that will work with this. But, um, a couple other odds and ends. Um, it's got a, uh, I don't know if this unit comes with this. I think it does. Uh, I could be wrong. Now, if you look at Burson's page over here, um, it shows a remote here, and then we've got this little infrared thing right here, uh, infrared receiver, so um, something like that. Oh, by the way, this is the power button. And you can hear some relays click as you turn it on. Um, the device itself has two gain levels, uh, one for like big headphones and one for maybe IEMs, so that's kind of the way I'm using it. Um, and... Uh, According to Burson's uh, page here, we have uh, ESS9038 DAC. Uh, this is three watts max, class A, single-ended. It's got an Exmos USB uh, processor. Basically, that's how it connects with USB. And uh, in fact, I did try this. You can easily use this with a USB-C um, you know, phone, uh, computer, uh, Mac. Um, works with, well, anything I tried it with. Um, it does have socketed op amps, and um, yeah, so let's, uh, that, that's the main stuff really. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and take this apart real quick, let's power it off, and unplugger. So <clears throat> let's pretend you want to play with the op amps in this. All you need to do is unscrew the top four screws on the front. Well, I should say two on the front, two on the back, like so. And then the top half comes off like so. Very, very nice. Um, far as geeking out on this, this thing is laid out really nicely. Uh, whoops. <clears throat> you can see that um, probably transistors are heat synced to the outside of the shell. So this entire shell gets warm as this thing uh, is in use. If you let it set for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, the whole entire case is warm to the touch, not hot, but warm. And it doesn't really get any hotter than that, as far as I can tell. Um, so right here we have some JRC uh, op amps, and these are 5534Ds. Uh, well, I should say the two middle ones, 5534D, and then we have a 5532D. Um, now, if we look up the, uh, so JRC op amps, this is their sort of data um, 
PDF, uh, we can see that at least the two middle op amps right here are monos. So you'd have to replace these with mono op amps, not stereo. And then the, uh, the outside ones are 5532D. And uh, let's see, if we go, uh, let me try this. Uh, 50, oops, 532D. And let's see, well, we could try this one. So yeah, um, <clears throat> that's kind of what I suspected. These, uh, the outside op amps are stereos and the two middle ones are monos. So um, probably I would be wanting to replace these in matched pairs. I mean, for sure. Um, just, you know, bits of information. Um, I don't have any matched mono op amps. I do have a couple of stereos. I didn't swap these out because I kind of wanted to just listen to this in stock format. Um, now, of course, uh, well, let's see. The price on this thing is uh, 550 as far as I know. Um, and that comes with these stock JRC op amps. Now, these are obviously not super expensive. Now, Burson makes the... Uh, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> the, here, I'll just pull up the page. Vivid series of op amps and a few others. Um, so, Burson op amps. And if we go here, so um, basically these are upgrade op amps. And so they have a few of these. We have, uh, if we look here, we have the Burson V5i. This is sort of like an old school styled op amp. Um, and then it has, you know, trans transparency, details, color texture, and dynamic and sound stage. And then as we move up their line, we get into more and more and more of those metrics until we have the, well, pretty much the V6 Vivid is, I think they're sort of top of the line, although this is probably to taste. Um, and I have tried the Vivid, not in this, but uh, in other devices and it's stunning. So kind of where I'm getting with this is depending on the price of these, let's see, if we go here, shop um let's see let's pretend we want to get some of the uh the v6s and we want to do uh two duels and by the way i think they come in monos as well but yeah so if we get two of these vivids we are at 145 bucks so now we're at uh 700 total for just two of these swapping out two maybe we need to get a couple more so if we get uh, two uh, singles or dual times one what is this yeah, that's two of them. Oh yeah, single times two. So 85 uh, in addition, 785. <laughs> so we're getting up there. So, and, and if I was to purchase this, I would very, very likely wanna swap these off amps out for the best of the best. Just wanted to, to kind of go over that. Um, the price is eh, steep, shall we say. Um, now, let's talk about the audio performance of this device. Now, um, <clears throat> I have had this for at least a few weeks. And if I compare to something like an E1DA or just, uh, you know, LG G8X cell phone, um, got some other stuff, even a uh, X-Duo TA20 um, tube amp or tube headphone amp. Oops. Um, I would call the audio signature of this, like if we said that, I don't know, this, this guy would be like um, maybe like a Porsche or something. Um, this would be like a Ferrari. <laughs> uh, okay, that's a bad analogy. Uh, what I'm trying to say is this thing has, it, it sounds more muscular and bigger and more open than your average digital output device, which is not class A, uh, maybe class D for this, not sure. Um, actually, I think this has an op amp in there, I think. But uh, anyways, my point of this is that uh, this is actually, it, it does in fact sound different than pretty much any just, you know, standard hundred bucks headphone amp DAC thing. Uh, and so let's pretend I stick in a multi-balanced armature set, say like the Moondrop uh, S8 or uh, A8 even. Um, this removes all digital sheen and glare. So if you have a headphone that has say push treble, um, you might use it with a device like this and the treble is going to be like in your face and like a lot. Use it with this and you're going to get a much richer and organic tonality with, like I said, almost no to no digital glare. So headphones that might have that uh, built into the tuning it would give you more of that. This thing will fix that in most cases, at least for everything I tried. 
Um, and so, you know, synergy matters. So um, I might use a, well, <laughs> higher end headphones scale better with this device than they do with this device. That's kind of the way I think of it. So, um, you know, level up definitely from this to this. Um, if I wanted to, uh, oh, by the way, uh, just in terms of the um, the, the gain levels, um, IEMs are going to be set to the low gain on this level, uh, low setting, and then I can turn this. So uh, let's see, I tried the 64 audio trio on this, and I can get up to about 40 to 50 on the volume out of 100, and then um, Tanch Gym Tanya, I can get up to maybe like 65, 70 at most, um, like on the low gain. So the uh, point I'm trying to make is that uh, you have a huge gain, gain range on this that you can use, and you should be able to use just about any headphone you could possibly think of uh, comfortably. The volume scaling on the knob is not super uh, high. So um, would I call it linear? Yeah, maybe. It's pretty linear. Um, so you, know, you don't have big volume jumps as you uh, turn the volume up. And, and so that's a safe type of thing for headphones or for IEMs, super sensitive IEMs. Uh, so yeah, like we're doing this kind of thing, you can kind of see the, so it's very easy to control. Um, let's say I do this. I'm not sure if I even remember doing this, but uh, turn it off, that's power. We get a little tiny little itsy bitsy blue light there and then turn it back on. And uh, oh yeah, it doesn't actually, let's see, let's go way high. Okay, so it doesn't reset the volume. Slightly dangerous in that respect. If you got music playing immediately, flip this on. You got something plugged in and maybe you flipped headphones. This this could be an issue a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so pay attention to that. Um, so would I recommend this? Hell yes, I would. Um, I don't have a good uh, idea of whether Burson has like a house sound, um, but... So I, I do have an Aeon uh, B1S, that's a class A um, amp, just amp, little portable guy, uh, only lasts maybe four hours, five hours on battery at most. And if I compare this to the Aeon, uh, both class A, totally different circuits, topologies, everything else, but um, I the, the Aeon has, it's like a level down from this in terms of the organicness, the largeness, the, the beefiness of the sound. Um, and a little bit extra digital glare um, on the Aeon versus this. However, both are in another league compared to something like this or a phone or, you know, take your pick on a low-end device. Um, so, yeah, I would highly recommend this. I think that if, with the stock op amp configuration, um, which is really all I've heard it with, it's excellent as hell, I would... Um, love to own this device. Right now I'm just testing it for Burson, um, pending review. Um, so that's cool. And uh, Burson has excellent support. Uh, anytime I ask them questions, they get back to me immediately with uh, <laughs> answers in English that I can easily understand. That's really nice. Um, and they're real friendly and all that sort of stuff too. So um, yes, highly recommended uh, as a class A device. Um, I wish I had other class A things to test with other than just the Aeon, but of all the stuff I own, um, if I had to pick one device that would be my only device and pretend I wouldn't have to be, because obviously this, this ain't mobile, but if this is just a desk device, I would pick this over everything else I own probably 10 out of 10 times. Um, I would love to upgrade the op amps. It's gonna get real expensive real fast. So I gotta think about that a little bit. Um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much the deal. Uh, I did uh, try the SPDIF in, oh, and by the way, you can't have, um, you have to flip the device. So you've got um, uh, inputs USB to, uh, let's see, whoops. I forget how this happens here. Oh yeah, this, this button, okay, I almost forgot. The volume knob clicks, push in. So yeah, you could change from USB to Toslink, although uh, whatever, SPDIF, Toslink, same. Um, and then uh, for the outputs, we have <clears throat> headphone or preamp. So that's so you don't have active uh, headphone amps and the RCAs on the back at the same time. You got to pick. And then um, we have uh, the pre level is the actual gain stage. So I have it on low right now for IEMs. That's my deal. 
And then uh, we have your filters, your um, Saber DAC filters. Dang it. <laughs> so we have brick wall, CMFR, reserved, AP fast, a, uh, MP slow, MP fast, LP slow, LP fast. And um, yeah, I can hear the difference on these. I, it's not like one is better than the other. It depends on the headphone type of music, but feel free to play with these. Um, I kind of like brick wall, kind of. And I think that's about it for the menu items. Yeah, so just the four right there. And uh, yeah, so really cool. Love this device. Um, highly recommended. Uh, probably would love to see some op amp upgrades with this. Um, oh, and by the way, um, I have some Sparkos, Sparkos op amps, and uh, you can only use their smaller, physically smaller types. I don't have it in front of me, but they have some bigger ones that um, you can't fit in this, but the smaller ones you could, well, you could put adapters, the little flexi adapters and things, and um, probably fit them in there one way or the other. Um, the Sparkos are very expensive, uh, similar to the Burson, but actually a little bit more. So anyway, thanks a lot, folks. Uh, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one.